لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه قال الله تعالى في كتابه الكريم بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحلو الأقدة من لساني يفقه قوي صدق الله العظيم Honorable viewers, brothers and sisters in Islam, brothers and sisters in humanity, to all our seekers of knowledge, seekers after the truth, and also to our viewers on YouTube and Facebook, I greet you all with the universal greetings of peace and love. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May the peace, guidance, mercy of God Almighty be with each and every one of you. Welcome to Let's Talk Islam with Imran Muhammad, bringing the light of Islam to each and every one of you. We open pray, believe in viewers, brothers and sisters that you are joining us this evening in the best of health and faith by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, this wonderful Monday evening alhamdulillah may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala God Almighty bless each and every one of you for taking the time off to be here to view our program alhamdulillah uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you for this tremendously believe in brothers and sisters you have a very packed program for each and every one of you this evening uh, inshallah and our educational content, subhanAllah, whereby we hope and pray that you are benefiting tremendously from these information, these uh, reminders, these Iman boosters, inshallah. And we hope and pray, believe in brothers and sisters, that each and every one of you are uh, benefiting tremendously, inshallah. Share this with those who are absent by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we'll commence our program as usual with our opening Quranic recitation so as to gain the mercy, rahmah, barakah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What other way to actually start this Believing Brothers and Sisters, start our program paving the way beautifully for the remaining items, inshallah, turning our attention to the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Quran. So without further hesitation, let us go straight to our opening Quranic recitation. <laughs> إلا تذكرة لمن يخشى تنزيلا ممن خلق الأرض والسماوات العلا الرحمن على العرش استوى له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض وما بينهما وما تحت الثرى وإن تجهر بالقول فإنه يعلم السر وأخفى الله لا إله إلا هو له الأسماء وهل أتاك حديث موسى إذ رأى نارا فقال لأهلهم كثوا فقال لأهلهم كثوا إني آنست نارا لعلي آتيكم بقبس أو أجد على النار هدى فلما أتاها نودي يا موسى إني أنا ربك فاخلع نعليك إنك بالوادي المقدس طوى وأنا اخترتك فاستمع لما يوحى إنني أنا الله لا إله إلا أنا فاعبدني وأقم الصلاة لذكري إن الساعة آتية أكاد أخفيها لتجزى كل نفس بما تسعى فلا يصدنك عنها من لا يؤمن بها واتبع هواه فتردى 
وما تلك بيمينك يا موسى قال هي عصايا اتوكأ عليها واهش بها على غنمي ولي فيها مآرب اخرى قال القها يا موسى فألقاها فإذا هي حية تسعى قال خذها ولا تخف سنعيدها سيرتها الأولى واضمم يدك إلى جناحك تخرج بيضاء من غير سوء آية أخرى لنريك من آياتنا الكبرى اذهب إلى فرعون إنه طغى قال رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقه قولي واجعل لي وزيرا من أهلي هارون أخي اشدد به أزري وأشركه في أمري كي نسبحك كثيرا ونذكرك كثيرا إنك كنت بنا بصيرا قال قد أوتيت سؤلك يا موسى ولقد مننا عليك مرة أخرى إذ أوحينا إلى أمك ما يوحى أن فيه في التابوت فقذ فيه في اليم فليلقه اليم بالساحل يأخذه عدو لي وعدو له وألقيت عليك محبة مني ولتصنع على عيني إذ تمشي أختك فتقول هل أدلكم على من يكفله فرجعناك إلى أمك كي تقر عينها ولا تحزن وقتلت نفسا فنجيناك من الغم فتناك فتونا فلبثت سنين في أهل مدين ثم جئت على قدري يا موسى واصطنعتك لنفسي اذهب أنت وأخوك بآياتي ولا تنيا في ذكري اذهبا إلى فرعون إنه طغى صدق الله العظيم Surely Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala God Almighty has spoken the truth That was our opening Quranic segment on our program Alhamdulillah Whatever blessings would have earned from that recite, recitation uh, Whatever blessings would have derived Insha'Allah we beg and pray if that it will be showered upon each and every one of you All our brothers and sisters who may be affected with any Difficulty, hardship in life, we make dua and we ask sincerely that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will shower that blessings upon each and every one of you. Remember, I believe in viewers, brothers and sisters, our program this evening, Let's Talk Islam with Imran Muhammad, is coming your way with the kind compliments and the courtesy of NNS Algo's Customs Brokerage Service. They are located at 49 Public Road Kitty in Georgetown, their head office, and also their branch office located at Lot 10A Public Road. Cornelia Ida on the west coast of Damar VNP supermarket. You can check them out for more information with regards to their products, their services that they offer. You can visit them at Lenora Public Road on the west coast of Damar as well. Um, a Wolf Furniture Store for more information with regards to their products, their services that they offer. Then check them out at Lenora Public Road 
on the west coast of Damara. Do Dollar Empire Incorporated, DR Trading, they are located at Lot 1 Lamaha and Cumming Street in Georgetown. Um, Gafson's Industry, for more information with regards to their products and services that they offer, then you can check them out at Rome Magdum on the east bank of Damara. Bacchus Drug Store, 24 South and the whole street, check them out, believe in brothers and sisters. And also in memory of my dear and beloved parents, Nazar Muhammad and Bibi Akila Muhammad. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God Almighty, bless our brothers and sisters for taking this initiative, taking this um, you know, this step in investing in this educational program. Alhamdulillah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you tremendously. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless your business, bless your earnings, and may this be a means and an avenue and a channel for you to enter into the Jannah and the parties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So let us take a moment and go to our um, reminder of the day, inshallah, our reminder segment on our program. And when we come back, we will have more of Let's Talk Islam with Imran Muhammad. Check out our reminder of the day. If your heart is made distant from Allah because of something that happened to you, that is a punishment. And if your heart became closer to Allah as a result of something that happened to you, it was the biggest blessing. Whether positive or negative is besides the point. You know what that means? Some people get a lot of money. They get a good job. They have a lovely family. They forget Allah. That's a punishment. Why? It was something that looked positive, but it drove you away from Allah. It took you to the clubs and it took you to bad habits. If that's the case, it was a punishment. It's not a blessing. Something looking good was not a blessing because it drove you away from Allah. And on the other hand, something that was looking so bad, you lost your job, you lost your limbs, you had an accident, someone passed away, etc. If it made you come for salah and change your life, wallahi, that was a blessing from Allah. Anything that brings you close to Allah is a blessing. That's why sometimes a person gets sick. And he's a wealthy guy. And he says, I'm going to the doctor. Go to the doctor. Doctor says, we're doing all the tests. He said, yes, we're doing the tests. He gets the MRI and he gets this done and that done. Pause for a moment. May Allah grant shifa to all those who are sick and ill. Say, Amin. All those who are sick and ill. And may Allah protect us all. Amin. So he gets everything done and you know what? Uh, they don't know what's the story. Why? My brother, you don't do your salah on time. You're not worshipping Allah. You're far from Allah. You're engaged in sin and so on. And Allah loves you enough to make you realize that it's only in the hands of Allah. So you'll go to the doctors and you should. But if nothing happens, nothing comes out one after the other. And then the doctor tells you, you know what? You only have six months to live. A person who... That statement draws closer to Allah is actually blessed. And the other one will get frustrated, start questioning Allah. Why are you doing this to me? Why me? I've got little children. Forget about it. You're not the first person with little children who's got six months to live. And by the way, when they say six months to live, it's not even cast in stone because you might live for another 60 years. Who knows? It's only a statement. They might be totally wrong. They, how many people have left, for example, healthy and they've died without a problem? And how many people have been told 24 hours to go, 24 years still? They're saying, Salam alaikum, Buddha. <laughs> MashaAllah, may Allah grant us ease. Rely on Allah. If anything brings you closer to Allah, it is a blessing. Welcome back to our program. That was our reminder of the day segment. Alhamdulillah. Remember, you can continue to view our program right here on channel 69 every Monday. Uh, Monday evenings at 8 30 inshallah you can subscribe to our channel on YouTube we have all our programs that are uploaded there our brothers and sisters who may not have the time to view our program on the television you may be busy for example you may have other commitments inshallah then you can able to view our programs there on our YouTube channel just subscribe to that channel there um, and you can able to have the various programs that are uploaded by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not to forget our Facebook page you can like our page page on Facebook, you can have the various reminders um, with regards to halal, haram, with regards to various ahadith and uh, you know, reminders generally that can able to act as an iman booster, that can able to act as a good motivation for each and every one of us. And also we have uploaded our programs there on our Facebook page. You can able to view our programs there uh, as well by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Stay connected, believing brothers and sisters via our WhatsApp group. 
6226842 is a number to subscribe and you can be a part and parcel of that group whereby we use that platform to share very valuable information concerning this beautiful deen of ours information such as halal haram with regards to moon sighting update as well various ahadith quranic ayah various quotes inshallah so you can be a part and parcel of that group believing brothers and sisters and stay connected by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and also you can be able to join our live stream our Friday's khutbah that will be streaming live on Fridays you can be able to tune into that as well you can be able to listen to that reminder and that bayan on our live stream on Fridays the Friday's khutbah by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so believe brothers and sisters Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through his infinite mercy his infinite wisdom alhamdulillah has granted us this very beautiful and wonderful opportunity that we have been given life alhamdulillah we have health and strength and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues to shower, shower us with various favors various blessings and this is definitely a very great favor for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is something that each and every one of us should always try to rec recognize and should always give praises and thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala under all conditions, under all circumstances, subhanAllah. The fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us this opportunity that we have completed the month of Dhul Hijjah, the 12th month of the Islamic year, Alhamdulillah, the year 1442 AH. AH, believe in brothers and sisters, meaning, meaning after the migration of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So when you hear the year 1442 AH or 1443 AH, it therefore means that we're speaking with regards to after the Hijrah, after the migration of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this is a great favor that we've completed the month of the Hijrah. We are in the month of Muharram, the first month of the Islamic year, and one of the sacred and sanctified months but that has been ordained by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let us take a moment, go to our um, ayah of the day, our verse of the day. Remember, believing brothers and sisters, this is a new segment that we have inculcated in our program, inshallah, for every week. And we wish to share with you very valuable uh, verses from the Quran, very mot motivational verses from the Quran that we are able to use, that we are able to read and ponder upon, inshallah, and try to make our lives better, try to build some sort of momentum uh, insha'Allah by using these verses, by, uh, by understanding and pondering upon these verses of the day insha'Allah. So let us go to that segment, believe in brothers and sisters, our verse of the day. And when we come back insha'Allah, we'll have more of Let's Talk Islam. I wish to discuss with each and every one of you with regards to the month of Muharram and also the Islamic year, the Hijrah, the migration of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and what it actually means to us as believers. Migration of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and how will this affect each and every one of us and what should we do as Muslims now that we are in this beautiful uh, new year and the new month, the month of Muharram. So let us go to our um, ayah of the day or verse of the day inshallah and when we come back we'll have more on our discussion right here in our program Let's talk Islam with Imran Muhammad. Welcome back to our program, Believe in Brothers and Sisters. That was our verse of the day segment. Like I've mentioned before, this is a new segment that we have inculcated in our program so that we can able to understand certain uh, motivational verses of the Quran so that we can able to use this as a, a booster, as an iman booster, as a reminder, inshallah, as a motivation for each and every one of us. That was our uh, verse of the day segment, Alhamdulillah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless each and every one of you, brothers and sisters. And please use this information, inshallah, that we're sharing on our program, all of these educational content 
that we have share this with those who are absent um, you know you're present you're viewing our program then try to share this with those who are absent by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala God Almighty has granted us this ability to complete the month of the Hijjah the month of the Hijjah being the 12th month of the Islamic year and it is very important believing brothers and sisters as Muslims believers we need to keep track of our Islamic year and Islamic months subhanallah it's very important that we uh, understand the names of the Islamic month it is very important that you understand the value of some of the, these months and some of the incidents that take place in some of these months um, simply because it plays a very pivotal role and a vital role in the life of every single Muslim and it is also believing brothers and sisters one of the cornerstone to our foundation subhanallah so we've completed the month of the Hijjah the 12th month of the Islamic year this is the month of Hajj and we all know the Hujjaj they will go to the sacred land the, the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to involve in that pilgrimage to involve in those rituals that are there commemorating the life of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam and the rituals that have been taken place in the city of Mecca and the surrounding area of Mecca as well. So they would have completed the Hajj, Alhamdulillah, in the month of Dhul Hijjah. We had the Qurbani as well in the month of Dhul Hijjah, uh, Alhamdulillah, where most of you would have embarked on that ritual to sacrifice an animal if it is a cow or, or a sheep, for example, whether you are part and parcel of a big animal. Then we would have commemorated that, commemorating this, uh, the passion of Ibrahim, commemorating that significance of Ibrahim and the legacy of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. So the month of the Hijjah, the last month of the Islamic year, the 12th month of the Islamic year, and it's considered to be also amongst those four sacred and sanctified months. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now had given us this opportunity that we've completed that month, we're in the month of Muharram. The first month of the Islamic year, believe in brothers and sisters, uh, and it is a demarcation or it is a, a mark of the beginning of the history calendar. It is the month of Muharram, it is an indication that the new year, the Islamic new year now has started, the year 1443 AH. Like I've mentioned before, AH means after the Hijrah, after the migration of the Prophet It is one of those sacred and sanctified months, the month of Muharram just like the other three sacred and sanctified months that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordained for each and every one of us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala highlights this in the Quran and make mention of this in the Quran whereby Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says إِنَّ عِدَّةَ الشُّهُورِ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ إِثْنَ عَشْرَ شَهْرًا فِي كِتَابِ اللَّهِ يَوْمَ خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ مِنْهَا أَرْبَعَةٌ حُرُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says verily, verily the number of months with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it is 12 from the moment Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the heavens and the earth this has been recorded in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is the lawhul mahfud from the moment God Almighty created the heavens and the earth so therefore means belief in viewers brothers and sisters that the 12 sacred and sacred this 12 months have been created and ordained by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even before the existence of mankind even before the existence of Prophet Adam alayhi salatu wasalam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created and ordained the 12 months even before the creation of Prophet Adam alayhi salatu wasalam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not implement this system at the time of Prophet Adam alayhi salatu wasalam, or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not bring this into existence in the time of Prophet Ibrahim or Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasalam, but in reality, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the 12 months from the moment Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the heavens and the earth and this has been recorded in the lawhul mahfud minha arba'atun hurum four of them are considered sacred believing brothers and sisters four of these months it is considered sacred the month of al hijjah the month of dhul qala the month of muharram the month of rajab these are the four sacred and sanctified months and all of the commentators of the Quran are unanimous on this point simply because the Prophet وسلم, in his last sermon when he was uh, when he mentioned in his last sermon on the occasion of his last Hajj 
the Prophet ﷺ declared that one year consists of 12 months, of which four are considered sacred. Twelve of these, twelve of these, uh, three of these months rather, three of these months out of the four come in succession. It runs in su succession, and one is by itself. And so the Prophet ﷺ indicated that the three months that run in succession, the Qada, the Hijjah, the Hijjah, the Qada, and the Muharram. So we are in the month of Muharram. And the one that is by itself, it is the month of Rajab. So these are the four sacred and sanctified months, believing brothers and sisters. Dhul Hijjah, Dhul Qada, Muharram, and Rajab. The month of Muharram, believing brothers and sisters, is the only month in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ascribed his name or his name, name has been attached to that. So this simply means, and it therefore tells us, that the month of Muharram, it is a very significant and sanctified month in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The month of Muharram holds a very high degree in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala simply because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has attached his name or ascribed his name to this month, the month of Muharram. Like the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he mentions in this hadith, he says, Afdur siyar ba'da Ramadan the Prophet ﷺ said that the best fast after fasting of Ramadan, we all know, believing brothers and sisters, that the month of Ramadan, it is the most blessed month of the year. Without doubt, we cannot compare any other month to the greatness of the month of Ramadan. And the fasting in the month of Ramadan, it is compulsory. It is an obligation upon those brothers and sisters Provided that you have the certain prerequisites and there are certain conditions have to be met, alhamdulillah. But generally, fasting in the month of the month of uh, Ramadan, it is a compulsion. It is uh, a fart obligation. So we cannot compare any other month to the month of Ramadan with regards to the greatness of it. So the Prophet ﷺ said that the best fast after fasting in the month of Ramadan, it is the fasting that is done in the month of Allah Al-Muharram. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala attributes his name towards the month of Muharram and this is the only month that has this feature of believing brothers and sisters. It therefore means that the month of Muharram indeed is a very significant and sanctified month and it has a very uh, sacred role in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and should be a month believing brothers and sisters that plays a very pivotal role in the sight of every single Muslim. We understand that in these sacred and sanctified months, then battles are prohibited. Quarreling, fighting um, are prohibited. That sinning in these sacred and sanctified months, even though sinning outside of these months is something that is very bad, is something that is very terrible, and sinning generally, believing brothers and sisters, it is haram. Sinning, violating the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is, it is haram. And a person who sins and commits error, then he or she will have to stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and give an account of how they would have utilized their time, subhanAllah. That is why we are always advised to make tawbah and seek forgiveness in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But generally, when we sin, subhanAllah, it is something that is bad, it is an error, it is something that is disliked in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is haram. And sinning that is done in these sacred, sacred and sanctified months, subhanAllah, is more detrimental in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is more uh, graver in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than sinning, sinning outside of these sacred and sanctified months, subhanAllah. This is the true reality. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues in the very ayah of that same verse when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, that this is the right religion, this is the straight law. And do not wrong yourselves in these months. Do not wrong yourselves, subhanAllah. Therefore, like I've mentioned before, sinning is very grave in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in these sacred and sanctified months as compared to sinning outside of any other month, believing brothers and sisters, even though sinning is something that is bad. So do not commit any sort of injustice during these sacred months. It is worse, it is graver. Uh, in this um, this month, the month of Dhul Hijjah, Dhul Qada, Muharram, and the month of Rajab, Subhanallah. 
So we need to understand, believing brothers and sisters, that we are in the month of Muharram now. And so we should utilize these times wisely. These precious moments and these precious times should be utilized in a way that is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because on the other flip side of the coin, just as how sinning is graver in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in these sacred and sanctified months, then so too when a person do a good in these sacred and sanctified months like the month of Muharram, when I do a good in this month of Muharram, then it is highly recognized by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the reward and the barakah and the blessing that will be given for such an act of goodness will be highly recognized and will be highly compensated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as compared to a good that is done outside any other month, subhanallah. And so we should try to utilize these precious times wisely that we're in the month of Muharram, a sacred and sanctified month. And so we should try to uh, encourage one another, inshallah, to do good, do much good as possible. If we're not performing our salah, then try to make this bold step in life now, the first month of the Islamic year, and try to act upon performing our salah. Try to follow that command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Try to do as much good as possible in these months so that we can able to get the maximum reward by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But now that we have completed the year 1442 AH after the Hijrah, after the migration of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we are in the new year, the year 1443 AH. What does this mean for us Muslims, as believers and people generally? What does this mean generally when we understand that we've completed a year? Like for example, I've completed the year 2020 or perhaps 2021. I'm now going into a new year. We understand that in December, it is the end of the year. And when I enter the new year, I am in the month of January. Isn't that so? And so you and I will start to make some sort of preparations. We will start to make some sort of New Year's resolution in our life. We will want, subhanAllah, to um, ratify our relationship with our Creator, for example. I will try to make some sort of amends. I will try to put my best foot forward when it comes to the New Year. So similarly, believe in brothers and sisters, this very same concept we should use. When we enter the new Islamic year, then we should also try to make some sort of resolutions in our life. We should try to make some sort of um, goals that we want to achieve, in, achieve insha'Allah ta'ala. This is the mindset of the believer, believing brothers and sisters. So I wish to discuss this with you in, uh, insha'Allah, but let us take a moment, go to our hadith of the day, and when we come back, we'll have more on our program. Let's talk Islam with Imam Muhammad. I want to speak specifically with regards to the new year, the year 1443 AH, and how we should operate as Muslims by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let us go to our uh, hadith of the day, inshallah. Brought us light through your guidance Peace be upon you, my beloved Ya Habibi, Ya Muhammad Ya Nabi, Salam Alaika Ya Rasul, Salam Alaika Ya Habib, Salam Alaika Salawatullah Alaika Welcome back to our program. That was our hadith of the day, golden advice from the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Alhamdulillah. Uh, so far, believing brothers and sisters, we are discussing with regards to the month of Muharram and the new Islamic year, the year 1443 AH. Like I mentioned before, AH means after the Hijrah or after the migration of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And so, what does this mean for believers as Muslims, like the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, who migrated from Makkah to Medina? The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam left. Makkah to Medina, left Makkah, entered into Medina simply because this was an instruction from, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa left the persecution. We understand from the history and the seerah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that in Makkah he was, um, they, they tried to uh, boycott the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They ridiculed him, they spat on him, they stoned him, they destroyed the reputation of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa they killed his companions, they murdered his companions, they murdered his family members, for example. 
the, uh, the narrations mention that they started to eat the leaves on the trees so much so that the droppings resemble the droppings of the animal. So they boycotted the Prophet sallallahu uh, alaihi wasallam, and they uh, treat him in such a manner, believing brothers and sisters, that was so uh, so inhumane. And then the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam migrated from Makkah to Medina. So the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam left that difficult life, left that hard life, and migrated to something that was good, migrated to something that was wholesome. And so in Medina, Islam started to flourish. Islam started to blossom. They were able to practice their religion more. It became more tolerable there. And, there were, and more persons became Muslim. They were able to embrace Islam in a very peaceful environment, subhanAllah. So the Prophet ﷺ migrated from that which was difficult for him, that which was uh, a negative for him, and that atmosphere, and migrated to something that was good, that was wholesome, that was uh, very relaxed, so to speak, subhanAllah. And so believe in brothers and sisters, you and I as Muslims, as we enter this new year, the year 1443 AH, let us also have a spiritual migration of ourselves. Let us do a spiritual migration of ourselves, subhanAllah. Migrating from those bad habits that we may would have had, migrating from those things that are bad, from those things that are negative, migrating from the haram, migrating from violating the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, migrate in terms of spirituality, in a spiritual sense, to that which is good. Leave off those things that are bad. Try to take stock of my life for the past years that I've gone by, subhanAllah. And try to make amends, try to ratify my relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, my creator, and also with the people around. Try to um, reconcile my relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and also the people around. Try to put my best foot forward, believing brothers and sisters. Start a new page or start a new leaf in your life, inshallah, in a positive way. You know, one of the reasons why uh, the month of Muharram was given the first month of the Islamic year or was considered to be the first month of the Islamic year, it is simply because in the month of the Hijjah, the Hajjaj, when they went to perform the Hajj and the pilgrimage and they completed that ritual, and accepted Hajj, believing brothers and sisters, as we all know, will put a person in a position whereby he is free from all sins. He's like a newborn baby. And so the month of Muharram, subhanAllah, was considered to be the first month of the Islamic year simply because of that reason, that when the Hujaj, they came back free from sin and accepted Hajj, free from sin, starting a new page in life, starting a new book in life, putting their best foot forward, this would, not be, this would happen in the new month, subhanAllah. And so the month of Muharram was the month that come after the month of Dhul Hijjah. And so when the Hujjaj, they come back, subhanAllah, then they were able to start a new page in the month of Muharram. And so similarly, you and I, we are now in the month of Muharram, the new year. Let us try to start a new page in our life. Let us try to do a spiritual migration of ourselves, inshaAllah, uh, by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If I'm not performing my salah, then use this new year to make amends. Try to inculcate my five daily salawat in my life. If I am performing my five daily prayers, then try to stitch in, try to uh, pray some sunnah prayer. Like the Prophet said that a person who performs the 12 sunnah prayer during the course of the day, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give him a house in Jannah. If I'm acting upon my sunnah prayer, then um, bring in some nawafil prayers that I can able to, to perform that I can able to perform if I'm not reciting the Quran then use this month of Muharram use this new year to make a change in your life and build a relationship with the Quran if I'm not accustomed to fasting then use these uh, precious moments to make a change in my life inshallah and build a good relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through my salah through my Quran through my fasting uh, and many other acts of worship and ibadah that we can able to do believe in brothers and sisters this is the deeper deeper meaning of the hijra and the migration that you and I as believers as Muslims we need to make a spiritual hijra of ourselves by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we're actually out of time believe in brothers and sisters 
Uh, I'd like to thank each and every one of you for feeding our program this evening. Alhamdulillah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability that whatever good came out of our little discussion, then let us try to act upon this. Share this with your friends and family by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember, don't forget to join me next week, Monday, right here on Channel 69, 813, for another segment of Let's Talk Islam with Imran Muhammad. Until then, I leave you with our Islamic greetings of peace. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May the peace, guidance of mercy and the mercy of God Almighty be with each and every one of you. Take a look at our quotation of the day as we bring down the cardinals on our program now, inshaAllah. <laughs> Shopping in Lenora at VNP Supermarket 20 North Lenora Public Road. Come in and enjoy great prices on the widest range of groceries, beverages, frozen meats and vegetables, and ice cream too, even food for your pets. Get detergents and bathroom soaps and cleaners, the full range, and all the brands. Pots and pans for the kitchen, cutlery, and crockery for dining. And all the household items you need to make home so comfortable. The ladies will love our cosmetics collection, perfect for gifts for special occasions and just what you promised yourself. VNP Supermarket 20 North Lenora Public Road, West Coast, Demerara. Kids need to be healthy, and taking care of them can be difficult. That's why at Backer's Drugstore, we stock the widest range in children's vitamins, tonics, formulas for colds, coughs and fevers and other healthcare products at the lowest prices. Remember, your kids are your future. Take care of them. Backer's Drugstore, where good health counts. <laughs> Yürekler aşkınla çarpar Sensiz dünya bizlere dar Selam sana ey kutlu yar With submission, faith and patience You convey the noble message Brought the light through your guidance Peace be upon you, my beloved Ya Habibi, Ya Muhammad Ya Nabi, Salam Alaika Ya Rasul, Salam Alaika